Right, this is part five of my battery loco, battery electric loco build. Uh, I said I'd, in my last video I'd, I'd give you periodic updates of where I'm up to. Well, I've progressed a bit further now. I've, I've done a few cosmetic jobs on what we're left to do on, to, on chassis. And then I've stripped it all down. And as you can see in front of you, it's all, it's all now painted up. Uh, there's a few things off my previous video which I which I pr might have missed, and I'll I'll run through them again later. So where I'm up to, I've I've just um, I've just painted the old chassis up in in black paint. Now it it's a bit a bit cold this time of year for painting, so I've had to be a bit careful really. I've had my heater on it workshop. And like I said in my previous videos, this is a budget build from a beginner's perspective. And I keep emphasising that because I don't want no experts to, to think, well, he's making a right budget of that. I, I'm just trying to to use all my items up in my workshop without having to spend any money on it or spend as least as I can on it to, to try to make a, a reasonable job. Now, the paint... I was rummaging around my paint box and I found I found a bit of high temperature paint which I'd got left, what I used on an exhaust pipe once. Now I've used that on the underside of the frame and on the on the uh, the axle boxes and the backs and fronts of the wheels and the axles as you can see there. So I've used that on that because it to be honest, it doesn't need an undercoat this, and it sticks like, well, poo to a shovel, if, if that's the right term. So that's what I've used, there was just enough uh, to do that, with that. And then on top, um, I've, I've given, it had a bit of rust on this plate, uh, surface rust, so I've given it a coat of um, anti-rusting compound, I forgot what it's called. Uh, I can't remember. And then I've let that let that uh, go off of an eye. Then I've used this stone chip, which I had a little bit left, on, on the top. And it's given like a, a bit of a, well, an industrial finish to it. Uh, so I'm going to put this back together now, put the wheels back in. I'll just show you underneath now it's painted. So it's all painted up, and it's marvellous what a bit of paint does it. It makes everything look reasonable again. Uh, and I'm not I'm not too bothered about underside because underside is going to get covered in oil and grease and all with chain flirting round, and uh, with uh, axle boxes need, need oiling, you know, co continuously. So I'll just put this back together and be back to it in a in a well. You'll only notice it in a few seconds. Okay, I'm back. A uh, few seconds to you, but half an hour to me. Uh, obviously, we're taking it apart and degreasing it, getting all oil off. Everything was tight going back on. Um, so, I've managed to get everything back on now, and I've got the keeper plates all fitted. Uh, it just wants some oil on it now, because it's, it's stiff. And the reason for that is, basically, because of because I degreased everything before I painted it. So, uh, I've got that back on and I'm just about to fit motor back on, which I'll show you in a second, but I just wanted to, to go back a step to my last video when I was explaining crank arms. Uh, it's important that one side, you've got the crank arm set perpendicular or vertical, whichever you like. And I stress the importance of these centres because if, if it's a little fraction out, it, it, you've got you're going to get tight spots on, on on movement. And then when you've got that one set vertical and got it got it pegged with your grub screws, the other side, they're vertical. The this side, the other side wants to be horizontal at ninety degrees both on them at 90 degrees so you've got 
one one offset at 90 degrees like that. Now, I think that's just to enable it so it doesn't jam up when it's starting, I think. But that's how it's done, apparently, and I'm no expert. So, I'm just going to fit this motor back on now, and I, and I don't think I shown you it last time with motor off. What I've done, I've just put four uh, studs in, in top plate and welded them on the other side, and then just ground, ground them flush. And then my motor, I'll just show you the motor, which is here. That's all cradled in that aluminium bracket which I which I shown you. And I've put a, a cell up pin straight through cog once it was lined up. And that bracket on backs for adjustment, fine adjustment. And what happens is it just slots into them four slots. Like that. Let them four studs, not four slots. So I'm just going to put that back on and put the chain back on then and I'll get back to you. Right, I've got it back, uh, everything back assembled again and uh, obviously with me painting it and with me getting all oil off or all bearing surfaces, it's everything's a bit tight now. So I've just given it a good oil. Uh, and got it, got it running, but we're not running as free, freely as we were in my last video, so it just needs a bit, of, a bit more running in, really. I shall continue with this video and I shall work on that later on in the day, uh, just giving it a bit more oil and a bit, run it in a bit more. So I'm going to turn it over now. Right, uh, I've got it all assembled now, where I've got up to, uh, just to show you my progress. And uh, as you've just seen, I've got that motor running again and uh, everything's a bit tight and needs, needs some more oil on it. And uh, I shall. I swear by three in one oil, me. It's good oil, that. I don't know how long I've had that tin. I've had it a long time. Uh, anyway, since I last saw you, uh, prior to me reassembling it, after I've just painted it, I've made these uh, imitation channels uh, and a step on it. And that's on both sides. Uh, you see my bumpers before, my buffers. And I'm leaving my crank arms and my conrod uh, in raw, raw aluminium colour. I'm not painting them, I don't think. Same with this, I'm not painting the, these. Uh, that's galvanised tube in that. So that's okay. That's stainless. Uh, everything else is aluminium. And uh, what I've decided, I've been thinking about my bodywork now. Right, I've just picked camera up there because me me tripod is is not really reaching high enough for what I want to show you, and I've made some boxes up to fit on top just to get me an idea, a, a scale of what I need to be uh, to looking at for body, and I think I've come to a conclusion that that's roughly where I want to be, and I know it's all square boxes, but that's just for dimensions. Uh, if you can see so I'm going to be working on them dimensions now and I've made a decision I hadn't made a decision on body weight when I last saw you I've made a decision now to make it um, on an idea just a second I'm putting camera down 
Yeah, I think initially uh, I shown you this drawing. We're all going to make a saddle tank engine. But I think I've gone off that idea now. And then uh, recently I was showing you this one, which I I got I quite I acquired from somewhere. I can't remember where. And uh, I think what I'm going to be doing is basing it around this this sort of uh, uh, shunter. This one's called a I think it's an American one, a Plymouth. Uh, so I'm, I'm basing it around that idea I've decided and I'm going to make my body work well I had a choice I've got I've got some steel on on stock and, and a, 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 some shelving that's an appropriate thickness but then uh, I'm going to pick camera up again so you'll have to bear with me then I find that I've got this these bits of aluminium uh, sheeting here and I know it looks a bit rough and bent at the moment, but I've measured it all, and uh, I think there's going to be enough when it's all cut out to, to do it in aluminium. I've just got to re-measure re that and double check. So, that's where I'm up to then at the moment. Uh, I've now got these finished. Uh, chassis all finished. My body works set. In stone, I think now what, I'm, what I've decided on, and making them boxes up help me to gauge everything. How, what sizes I wanted it, so it's all in scale, and uh, I think it'll probably end up something like that. Now I've decided. Uh, I think that's everything I've updated you now. Yeah, I think so. So, I'll uh, in another few days or a week's time, I'll I'll do another uh, progress report on where I've got to. And uh, this afternoon, I'm going to just put some more oil round round them bearings and bushes and uh, and get another run in. Because now I've painted it and moved everything and degreased it, it's a, everything's gone a bit tight again. So. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll, uh, I'll update you uh, maybe in a week or uh, maybe sooner, I don't know, see how things progress. Thanks for watching. Or right, if you subscribe to my channel, I think it'll notif I think you get notified. I I'm pretty new to YouTube and I think you get a notification if, uh, if somebody's put a video up and you're interested. So... I'll catch you later then.